Hi everyone, and welcome to today's class. In the last video, we started the topic capital rationing. Where we said capital rationing is a situation whereby there is a limited supply of funds which hinder us from investing on some projects. But that therefore, we now tend to do what to allocate the available resources to some projects. Having said that, having divine capital rationing as limited of fund, either by internal factor or external factors. So the internal factors which normally leads to what to run capital rationing is a situation whereby the management of an of organization puts limits on the hard flow of the company. There have been budget limits for the hard flow of the company. That is, you don't want to spend beyond this particular amount of money in this period. If such a scenario arises, it is a situation whereby we define as, the term as, internal or soft capital rationing. Also, we saw if we have what we what we want uh, the other type other other kinds of capital rationing to be external factors or hard capital rationing, in which is a situation whereby there's a restriction on the on fund, which now in the long run leads towards rationing of capital, where it is due to external factors. External factors in the sense that the company will not be able to do what there may be there may be a restriction on the company to do or to source of fund externally due to some agreements between what the creditors and the company. The creditors may place uh, a cut order on the what, on the company for it not to do what not to take any other fund until a certain period of time is what is a uh, that's elapsed. But that therefore we tend to have what external capital rationing. Sometimes the company may not have a good a credit body may not be may not have a good uh, credit rating. Yes, by that therefore it's going to place a limit on what to on the capital for the company to do what to use to finance its operation. By that there will be what, there will be a situation of what of capital rationing. I must say the cost of capital rationing. In the last video also we also talked about I also talked about the types of capital rationing. Where we say we have a single period and a multi period capital rationing. A single period capital rationing is a situation whereby there is limited of fund for a single period, just one after, just a single period, in which there will be limited, there will be free, there will be free, in which after the single period there will be a free available fund for the company to do or to use to finance its operation. So also we say, I said we have, we also have a uh, multi-period capital rationing. This is a situation whereby the restriction place on capital is more than a period, is spanned over the period of, over the over the period. So that is the situation of what of multi-period capital rationing. And on that single period capital rationing, I said that we have uh, we have projects and that we have divisible projects, we have uh, indivisible projects, we have mutual exclusive projects, and we have mutually dependent projects. And the uh, and the yardstick for making our decision for all this under the single period capital rationing in order to know which period which project to allocate the fund available to first and in which order should we allocate this fund to the project available. So we use the profitability index or the benefit cost ratio to determine which project should we invest on first. That is, with this available resource, with the resources and with the available capital that we have, which of these projects should we give uh, priority to? In our way, therefore, we test to do what to compute our profitability index or compute our BCR. From there, we now rank all the projects in order to know which one give us what uh, we call the, the, the highest profitability index. We then we to do our test to go to allocate our resources in that order. I would say that so today we are looking at single period capital rationing. 
we're going to take it one after the other. So single pair of doctor ration in Honda, if you are going to look at reversible projects, mutual exclusive projects, mutual exclusive projects, indivisible projects, and mutual independent projects. So let's now look at the single pair of doctor ration in now. So this is a situation where capital rationing is limited only one period. It's limited only for one period, and that capital is really available thereafter without any limits. The basic approach is profitability index, which is defined as profitability index is defined as is PI, short form shortly to PI, is defined as what total present value of inflows over outflow. So when you compute this, when you, have, when you sum it up, your total present value of what the total present value of inflows, however, hard flows, what you'll be arriving at is what is your profitability index. So the profitability index can also be defined in terms of benefit cost ratio. There's a relationship between profitability index and benefit cost ratio. So which is given as BCR is what net present value. However, hard flow. Where we have a uh, total present value of inflow. We have inflow. This one is inflow, in which we have not removed the initial outlay for, from it, just the total present value of inflow. Of inflow. So, the difference between this is between the present value of inflow and net present value is what here there has been what it has been consideration of what to of initial outlay. And the result will be what to have at the next present value. So we have for probability index we have present value of inflows over hot flow. While for BCR is net present value hot over hot flow. In, in the long run, so inversely, so we are, we are looking at it. So probability index can be written in terms of what benefit cost ratio. We have our probability index is equal to benefit cost ratio plus one. So anytime you compute your your benefit your profitability your benefit cost ratio, you want to get you want to compute your uh, profitability index. Doesn't matter of what adding one to it, and you are going to have the same answer you have here. So I would say this this is what basically uh, single pair capital rationing, and there are some assumptions in which uh, underlying there is underlying assumption on the. Uh, single period capital rationing. Number one assumption is that once you cannot undertake or you cannot, once you cannot undertake a particular project for a period or for a period under capital rationing, the project is assumed to be what to, to be lost. That is if the period of if there's a particular project in which you are not you are unable to do what to uh, invest on due to capital rationing. For that single for that period of time, that project cannot be uh, invested on again. It means what the opportunity is what is lost. You cannot invest on that uh, investment again after uh, the single period capital ration. That is to say, any period that is not invested on under the single period, you cannot invest on such projects again. Another assumption is that there is complete certainty about the outcome of uh, of the outcome of the project. At this, you can know, you can really know what the outcome of the project is. That is another underlying assumption uh, on that, so on the single period capital rationing. So let me just list those factors, those are the underlying assumptions on that capital ration, on that single period capital rationing. I will return to look at it uh, in detail. So let me rub this. Assumptions.
So basically, these are the three assumptions. These are some of the assumptions underlying uh, single period capital rationing. The first is what if a company does not accept and undertake a project during the period of capital rationing, the opportunity to undertake such projects is lost. At least, if you have a series of projects and you cannot undertake such projects due to what to due to capital rationing, which is a single period capital rationing. Those investments that you did not undertake for that period is what to, is lost. At least you cannot invest on such projects again. The second assumption is there is complete certainty about the outcome of each project so that the choice between projects is not affected by risk. That is, you can ascertain the outcome of a particular project of each project. So when you now make your decision, there's no you now make your decision, you are making the right decision. Simply put, projects under single period capital rationing is what to, is risk free. Also, projects are divisible so that it is possible to undertake part of the project and also receive the percentage of percentage benefits. Percentage of benefits. So also receive the percentage of benefits of the part taking. Percentage benefit. Okay, let me just let me rub it. Percentage benefit. Percentage benefits. So projects are divisible so that it is possible to undertake parts of the project and also receive extended benefits for the part taken. So what this one is saying is that there is an opportunity for you that on a single period of time, the projects are divisible. All about the visible of projects. That is, you can take a certain percentage of such a project if the fund available is not enough for you to do what to invest on all the projects. You can invest, for example, 50% of the total value of the project, and also in turn, you are going to do what? Receive 50% benefit of what or of what to on total of the total benefit from the project. That is, if you invest 50% in the project, you are going to receive what 50% benefit as well from that uh, project as a well. whole. So this is just to say uh, introduction to single period capital ration. So how we'll be looking at each of the scenarios on that single period capital rationing. As I said, we have uh, the visible project, mutually exclusive, mutually exclusive project, indivisible or mutually dependent project. So we shall be looking at all this uh, under, in detail on that single period capital rationing. So watch out for the next video and do what, and in order to do what, to follow me, on explanation for each of the projects, each of the scenarios we have under the single period capital actually. So that is that for today. If you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, kindly click on the subscribe button. Watch the videos. Any comment you need you have about these videos. Or how you think and this video can be improved upon. Kindly put it on work on the comment section. I'll be glad to do what to receive your comment. Kindly share this video with your loved ones. Invite them to subscribe to the YouTube channel, student preparing for examinations, and then let them know about this YouTube channel. So, till we meet next time, I say, remain safe and God bless.